Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It is August the 12th, 2019. Let's talk heavyweight championship boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I feel the betting line on the rematch. Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz. In fact, let's say the fight the right way. The champion's name goes first. Andy Ruiz versus Anthony Joshua. I believe the betting line is way off. As I make this video on August the 12th, right? And just pay attention to any news that breaks after this date, right? There's going to be a lot going on. Weigh-ins, rumors, sparring partner stories, and stuff like that. But just to understand that as of today, Andy Ruiz is a two and a half to one underdog. Right? You're getting five to two on Andy Ruiz as an underdog. I think that's wrong. I think public perception is way off here. The bet I'm recommending is Andy Ruiz to win the fight. I expect Andy to do so by KO, but if the casino is going to pay me a five to two, if I'm getting two and a half to one odds, <laughs> I don't have to be Einstein here. I'll just take Andy Ruiz to win. I do believe you need a hedge, and the hedge is Joshua by KO. Let's be clear. Understand the risk involved. If this fight goes the distance, and if the guy, the public believes, is the overwhelming favorite, wins the fight by decision, you lose it all. Now let's break down the fight together. The zone, the outfit that televised the first fight, has done something great. They have put the fight online. Right? They've even put the key part of the fight in its entirety, the entire round, online. And that's round three of the first fight. Now, what I want to do is to draw your attention to, in my opinion, the key moment in that entire fight, right? It is the key moment. Anthony Joshua <clears throat> is a gifted puncher. There aren't that many, right? He hits hard with both hands. If he sees the opening and can get off the shot, he can drop you. Now, in that third round, after two feeling out rounds, right, the guys don't know each other. The guys are in the ring gingerly assessing each other. There's a lot of respect that you won't have, by the way, in the second fight. There's a lot of respect. There's distance between the fighters. In the third round, Joshua gets off a great left hand. It hits the target. It hits Andy flush in the face. Now understand, Ruiz hadn't been knocked down before. This was new. Ruiz is caught by surprise to the point where when he hits the canvas, one of his arms, I believe it's his right arm, is caught behind him. Right? Could have suffered a big injury. He falls on that arm. Had he hurt the rotator cuff, had the bicep been stretched, we wouldn't have had a new heavyweight champion. Understand how close Joshua comes to closing the show. So Ruiz gets off the canvas for the first time in his professional boxing career. Right? It's all gone wrong. 
Here he is challenging for the heavyweight title, and he's on the canvas in the third round. Now, on the telecast, one of the better guys on the zone, I believe it's Chris Mannix, starts to say, at least on the American feed, that Joshua is the consummate closer. He actually invites the viewer to watch closely at what happens next. In other words, the knockdown of Ruiz is not a flash knockdown. <clears throat> He's been drilled. He gets up. There's an open question as to whether he's conscious, as to whether he has enough to withstand Joshua's next big punch. Understand the fight literally comes down to the next big punch Joshua throws. <clears throat> so Joshua comes over. Reputation of being a finisher. Right, I believe at that point only Carlos Tackham had gone the distance with him. Right, Joshua finishes Vladimir Klitschko, finishes Dylan White, right? Excuse me, not Carlos Tackham, Joseph Parker had gone the distance with him. Right, Tackham didn't make it the distance. Right, Joshua, reputation for ending fights, accurate puncher, not a free swinger. Right? Very accurate puncher. So when Ruiz gets off the canvas and the fight continues, Joshua comes over. Right? He's going to step now into the pocket. Cautious Joshua is going to be aggressive here. So he throws a straight right hand, as I've said. Joshua has power in both hands. <clears throat> that punch lands. Right? Look at the fill. The reason Andy Ruiz is the heavyweight champion is because Andy Ruiz takes the punch. Right? It lands, folks. Ruiz doesn't block it. Ruiz takes Joshua's right hand, pivots, has Joshua trying to open up right in front of him. Ruiz then starts throwing combinations, starts hitting Joshua in the side of Joshua's head. Joshua hits the canvas, really for all intents and purposes, at least for hours. Joshua's reign ended in that moment. Understand, <clears throat> Joshua's game has structural problems that Andy Ruiz can exploit, right? Because from that moment forward, once Andy Ruiz takes the right hand and starts throwing combinations, has a big clunky guy in front of him who's not a combination puncher, right? Who's actually trying to trade with Andy Ruiz. Once we get to that dynamic, the fight, dare I say it, is an absolute mismatch. Understand, when Joshua goes down, he doesn't know what hit him. He has absolutely no idea what hit him. Right? The word trade is a dirty word for the Joshua camp here. Because they can't trade with Andy Ruiz. What happened in that third round is after a moment of complete desperation, both fighters learned that if Andy steps on the gas, collapses the pocket, and starts to trade with Anthony Joshua, Joshua cannot compete. Let's talk about it. Let me back up a moment. Again, the bet I like is Andy Ruiz to win. Catch with Joshua by KO. In my opinion, Joshua's only chance in this fight is to land a home run punch. 
It's the catch Andy cold first punch of the combination, right? First punch of the exchange. I shouldn't use words like combination in talking about Joshua. First word of the ex first punch of the exchange. I'll agree. Joshua hit so hard. Joshua's already dropped Andy Ruiz. That Joshua has a shot at dropping Andy Ruiz. Right? I'll concede you need the KO hedge. But apart from that, the fight's a mismatch. Let's talk about why. First, the mental angle. And it matters. Right? I know many of you disagree with me. I know it. But I don't buy the entire Joshua narrative on why his fight with Deontay Wilder didn't take place. But I just don't buy it, folks. Understand, Wilder had no problem negotiating a fight with Tyson Fury. Understand, the people behind Wilder are really the most experienced people, certainly some of them, in the sport of boxing. Al Heyman and Shelley Finkel. Right? Finkel, for those who don't know, used to advise Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Al Heyman has put in the United States boxing back on network TV, right? These are serious people. Wilder was prepared to fight Joshua in the United Kingdom. Wilder is a longer reigning heavyweight champion than Joshua. How could that fight not be made? You even have former heavyweight. And I understand people are claiming that there's some beef between Lennox Lewis and Anthony Joshua. Right? Okay. Okay. But you even have Lennox Lewis saying, look, this fight shouldn't have been so hard to make. Right? Understand, Wilder was prepared to accept less. So I don't buy the Joshua narrative at all. Right? The bottom line, in my opinion, is Joshua didn't want to fight Deontay Wilder in the United Kingdom. Right? Understand, too. I know we look at Joshua and I know you say, wow, this guy has fought some people, hasn't he? Right? Vladimir Klitschko, Joseph Parker. Parker held a share of the belt when uh, he fought Anthony Joshua. Dylan White, who, when he's not testing positive, is a mandatory contender. But look at the number of fights. Right? Andy Ruiz has significantly more fights than Anthony Joshua, right? Think about Joshua's manner of winning his fights. Think about the rough moments in Joshua fights, right? Hit hard by Vladimir Klitschko. Hit hard by Alexander Povetkin, right? Hit hard, folks. I'm just telling you that looking at Joshua films, I'm not convinced that Joshua has completely learned certain parts of the game that I believe Andy Ruiz has learned. So, Joshua in an interview claimed that the reason he lost to Andy Ruiz was in part because of people booing at Madison Square Garden and in part because he was thinking of Deontay Wilder, the guy who offered him $50 million for the fight, and he didn't take it. Now, let me just say this, and you can tell me in the comment section of this video whether you think I'm being fair or unfair, right? Whatever, I'm just telling you how I'm playing this fight. But, um, Understand, looking at the crowd at Madison Square Garden that night, that was a British crowd. The crowd was singing Sweet Caroline before Joshua came in, right? That was a British crowd. Folks, if you're a visitor to New York City, you can't do better than the crowd Joshua had at Madison Square Garden, right? Understand the history of New York City. I can tell you as a Knicks fan, I remember booing Bill Cartwright. In fact, forget that. 
When I was younger, I remember a big portion of Yankee Stadium booing Reggie Jackson. Understand, both Cartwright and Jackson played for the home team. Right? In the Northeast, in America, fans are passionate. They show up, they let you know what they feel. Now, there's a flip side to that. If the fans love you, they're going to cheer for you. Right? If the fans love you, they have your back. Now, for Anthony Joshua to feel thrown by some boo birds at Madison Square Garden <laughs> in a fight promoted by his promoter, where the crowd is singing Sweet Caroline. Folks, they weren't singing that for Andy Ruiz. Understand, that fight was really a home fight for Joshua. Ruiz had less support from the crowd. Ruiz was viewed as an opponent, a last-minute opponent. Right? So when I'm hearing Joshua talk about, oh, boo birds at Madison Square Garden, I I'm wondering, okay, is this a intentionally false narrative? Is this a guy trying to come up with some public relations spin to placate fans? What's the deal? The rematch should have taken place at Madison Square Garden, for crying out loud. Right? Let's be real here. Andy Ruiz is the champion. Madison Square Garden is the mecca of boxing. Lord knows it's easy for British people to come to New York City. They do time and time again. Right? You remember that Amir Khan, Pauli Malignaggi fight. You remember the crowd being probably more British than it was for Malignaggi, who was the New Yorker in that fight. Let me just say here, I'm going to pivot here. Let me just say, the Saudi Arabian location for this fight is terrible for Anthony Joshua. I believe if he were a little bit more savvy, since he's claiming to be thrown off by boo birds in the crowd, <laughs> since he seems to be sensitive to booing, just, just imagine explaining to some fighter like Azuma Nelson, who likes to fight on the road, being too sensitive to the crowd. Imagine telling Sonny Liston that some guy booing from the crowd is going to throw off his game. Folks, it, it, it just wouldn't happen. That's what Anthony Josh was telling you happened. But yet he signs to fight the rematch in Saudi Arabia. Folks, I want you to Google George Groves' comments on that. Right? Understand, George Groves fought in Saudi Arabia. Wasn't a British crowd. Saudi Arabia has visa requirements, don't they? Right? Let me just say this, too. I love when fighters get paid. I love when a global sport like boxing goes global. But let me also say... Let me also say that from a Western point of view, hold on one second. Whew. All right. From a Western point of view, Saudi Arabia does not meet Western democratic standards, right? I don't want to hear about women in Saudi Arabia now suddenly having the right to drive on their own. Folks, they should have always had that right. Right, let's face it too. The LBGT community has a lot to be concerned about. Given the persecution of gays in Saudi Arabia, so George Groves is basically saying that when he went to fight in Saudi Arabia, he found himself fighting before the local crowd. 
that there weren't a lot of Englishmen in the crowd. Right? Saudi Arabia is tough to get to. You're ready to buy a ticket. They hit you with work visa requirements. And you're thinking, oh, you know what? I, I'm going to go to the pub in town and watch the fight. Right? So if Anthony Joshua was that sensitive to the crowd, what's he doing fighting in Saudi Arabia? Wouldn't he have been better off fighting in New York City? Isn't it easier for British folk to go to the airport and just cross the Atlantic. When you're in New York City, too, isn't that a better party spot than a place where, hey, it might look great, might be modern and stuff like that, but you understand women just don't really have the rights they have in New York City. Right? I mean, let's, let's just be real here. So, let's talk about the actual fight itself, since I've gone through 20 minutes already. Let me just say this. Anthony Joshua, who's fighting Ruiz way too soon, will never, never be able to match Andy Ruiz in hand speed. He simply can't do it, folks. Right? Andy Ruiz has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Understand that first Ruiz fight, that's how Andy always fights. The fight Andy had before that, Alexander Demetranko basically said, no mas, I've had enough. He was getting hit with combinations and stuff like that, had no clue how to stop them. The worst thing that could happen to Anthony Joshua in this fight is if they actually start trading blows. In other words, Joshua has to rely on gimmicks. You remember what started the 12th, excuse me, the late round fuselage against Vladimir Klitschko, right? The two guys are together. Joshua has a little move he does where he just throws an uppercut out of the break. Right? Joshua needs gimmicks like that. By the way, he tried it against Joseph Parker, who had a hand down there. Tried it a couple of times. Parker blocks him. Right? But Joshua needs that first punch. He needs to hit you hard as you collapse the pocket. Because if he doesn't, and a boxing match breaks out in a boxing match, Andy Ruiz has a distinct advantage. Anthony Joshua is a guy, again, with only 22 fights. He can't match Ruiz in terms of the wealth of Ruiz's experience. I know Joshua's fought big names. They've conceded, either them or the referee in the Parker fight, have conceded that Joshua's alpha in the fight. They treat him that way. One of the shocking things in the Andy Ruiz fight is that Andy gets in the pocket and wants to trade. Wants to trade with Anthony Joshua. Ruiz has been in some rough and tumble fights. Right? I go back to the Joe Hanks fight. Right? Ruiz has been in a bunch of fights that have gone differently. He's even had a guy who's more coordinated than Joshua, Joseph Parker, fight him on his back foot for most of the fight. Right? So Ruiz, I believe, understands his limitations, and he can't fight on his back foot. Right? In my opinion, he can't. And he realizes his limitations, and Andy also has seen different styles in the ring. Because Andy's a combination puncher, right? Andy has thought things through when the bullets start flying. Andy keeps throwing punches. From this seat, Andy Ruiz has the more experience with different fight styles. Right? Let me say this, too. Anthony Joshua throws a tremendous straight right hand. It's tremendous. But understand, it has to be straight. He can't 
throw a right hook to knock you out. Right? When he's throwing his right hand to hurt you, it really has to be straight. Well, that's not the case with Andy Ruiz. What I want you to do is to revisit the film of the first fight. You're going to see Ruiz hitting Joshua on the sides of his head with both hands. And he can actually change the trajectory of his punches. He's what I used to call here online, adaptive reactive. Right? He doesn't show up with specific tools saying, I'm going to be a clone of Vladimir Klitschko. Let me throw a jab. Let me throw a left hook. Let me throw a straight right hand. Right? Let me have my own wrinkle where I lean on you and I can throw an uppercut. Right? No, no, that's not Andy Ruiz. Andy sees your guards a certain way and he then tucks hooks behind the guard. So Joshua does have a hand up here. Andy's hitting him here. Andy is the more adaptive, reactive fight. Let's face it, too. Joseph Parker, if you believe the scoring, beats Andy Ruiz backing up behind a jab on his back foot. I'm just telling you that Anthony Joshua doesn't have that level of coordination to fight a back foot game. Let me say, too, Ruiz is a cagey vet. Right? Watch his upper body. Look at his defense. He has a high guard. Folks, his hands are up here. Right? He's thinking defense. Watch how he moves. And he moves just enough to throw off an opponent. Right? And his movement, he doesn't look like he's moving a lot and stuff like that, folks. This is a vet. He moves enough. So when he's in the pocket, Andy is rolling with your punches. He's taking some of the wind out of it. He has a hand up. He's catching part of it on the hand. He's moving away. More importantly, because Andy's quick-handed, very fast hand speed, because he's quick-handed and because Andy is there, to get a stoppage. In other words, the punches he's thrown are power shots in the combination. As you throw and Andy moves, right? Andy's prepared to trade with you. Andy's that rare fighter who would welcome the opportunity to trade with Anthony Joshua all 12 rounds. Right? Let me just say, too, Anthony Joshua does not have the defensive skills to trade with Andy Ruiz. Right? If they start trading and Joshua sees that the straight right hand is not available, Joshua sees that a left hook is not available, a straight left is not available, Joshua's in trouble. Right? Understand, the more open this fight becomes, the more at risk Anthony Joshua is. Let me also say, too, that Joshua is accustomed to being alpha. Right? He's accustomed to being the hunter, not the hunted. So he hasn't developed certain skills. He can't clinch. Right? Go back to the klitschko Povetkin fight. Klitschko would have been in trouble in that fight had he not known how to clinch Povetkin. Let me also say, too, we look at that version of Vladimir Klitschko. Klitschko more in his prime than he was at the end of his career. And we forget the long road that Klitschko took to get there. Right? The losses. The people like Ross Purity. Corey Sanders, the 
change in trainers to Emmanuel Stewart. Understand Klitschko had a more varied pass than Joshua. We saw the end result of a multi-year process. Then we saw Joshua who looked like Klitschko, but who didn't attend the classes Klitschko attended to in prior bouts, right? Wasn't in there with a Corey Sanders who collapses the pocket on Klitschko. Right? Didn't completely run out of gas, which is what happened in the purity fight. In a fight, by the way, in Klitschko's backyard. No, AJ at 22 fights may have looked like Klitschko, wasn't Klitschko. Understand, AJ can't clinch. AJ can't even, and this is straight off the first fight, get himself off the ropes. When Andy gets AJ over by the ropes, folks, AJ is in trouble. Looks like he's getting pummeled. So let me just say, too, Andy, the worst kind of guy to fight if you don't know how to clinch. Because Andy is savvy and knows how to keep his hands moving to avoid being clinched. There aren't the lulls in this fight that would allow an inexperienced fighter, comparatively, to figure things out. And so AJ's at risk. Anytime the fighters start to trade and his first shot doesn't knock Andy down, the first power punch he throws, if they actually start trading, AJ doesn't have the hand speed. He doesn't have the defense. He's not coordinated to get on his back foot. His jab isn't a mobile jab, right? AJ has a jab when he's standing relatively stationary. If the pocket starts to collapse, if the house starts to burn down, you look at films of people like Ali, getting out of the pocket, throwing a jab, throwing a combination, backing up. AJ doesn't have the game backing up. So if Andy gets AJ on the ropes, is able to dodge the first punch of AJ's combination, which he does consistently after the knockdown in the first fight, right? Let's remember what happens next. Joshua gets dropped two more times. Well, gets dropped two times in the third round, right? Is done. Doesn't look great in the fourth, fifth, or sixth round. Then he's blown out in round seven. Right? Joshua, at the end of the first fight, has no clue how to deal with Andy Ruiz's styles. Finally, let me just say, there's going to be a big difference, too. And it doesn't even involve the fighters for the rematch. It involves you, the public. You're going to see the fight differently. The first fight, they entered the ring. AJ was the champ. Right? You were focused on AJ's power. What's AJ going to do? Well, now the world knows. Everyone but the people setting the betting lines here. That Andy Ruiz is the faster fighter. That when Andy gets in the pocket, he has as much a chance, in fact, a greater chance, in my opinion, of dropping AJ than AJ has of dropping him. You're going to ask yourself uncomfortable questions like, gee, has AJ done enough here to take Andy Ruiz's title? You're going to notice the deficiencies in AJ, right? When you view someone as alpha, you give them a certain latitude, right? When suddenly now you're viewing the fight 
with knowledge of what happened in the first fight. And you see that the guy you thought was alpha can't really trade with the other guy. Doesn't really have great defense. When his back touches the ropes, let's just say he doesn't look like Ali or Floyd Mayweather against Maidana with his back up against the ropes, right? He's not Salvador Sanchez against Wilfredo Gomez. When Gomez gets Sanchez's back up against the ropes only to get dropped, right? That's not Anthony Joshua. So I believe when a champ has the hand speed advantage, right, is better at moving the other guy around the ring, right? Watch Ruiz. It's all scripted. Understand Andy comes in, he's looking like he's happy to be there. Folks, this is a guy who's taking the long road to where he is. Right? The long road. Right? This is a guy who's a lifetimer in boxing. He was on the Olympic team. No one talks about it. The Mexican Olympic team. He's of Mexican heritage. He's proud. He lives in the United States. Understand, even in Southern California, Andy Ruiz is not a household name. Look at the empty seats when he fights Demetranco. Right? No, Andy Ruiz is here. He goes to New Zealand. Now think about it. Both guys fought Joseph Parker. Right? The referee in the UK doesn't allow Parker to get inside. We've never seen AJ fight Parker, who goes the distance with him in the United Kingdom. We've never seen him fight Parker in New Zealand. Right? Understand, in New Zealand, the referee there allows the fighters to fight inside. Right? Andy Ruiz went to New Zealand to fight Joseph Parker. The fighters were given much more latitude. The fight was razor close. Andy feels he got robbed. Right? This is a guy who's traveled the difficult roads that Vladimir Klitschko, when he was younger, traveled. So when Andy's in the ring, you'll notice he's not walking into AJ punches. He's actually a little bit distance away. He has his hands up. World-class fighter understands defense is involved. Right? So the entire spacing game, Andy has an advantage on it. Right? So to sum up, I don't think the styles mesh well for Joshua. Joshua is a gifted puncher who has a chance, a puncher's chance, in every fight. But somebody in the comment section of this video explained to me how a guy who doesn't have the hand speed advantage, who doesn't have the defensive advantage, who isn't ready to clinch and turn and stay in the middle of the ring, right? Think about where that first fight is fought, right? That seventh round, Joshua's over by the side of the ropes, doesn't know what to do, can't get himself to the middle of the ropes. How's that going to change in a matter of a few months, right? If you think I'm being harsh, just understand that we'll just name two guys who've traveled Joshua's road, two Olympic gold medalists who have held a heavyweight title, right? Just understand that both George Foreman and Lennox Lewis think that this rematch is happening too soon. For Anthony Joshua, forget me, don't those guys know boxing? Olympic champ, heavyweight champ. Let me throw out another name too. Deontay Wilder, longest reigning current heavyweight champion. Right now I understand Wilder's a little bit different than the other two because Wilder might fight Joshua. Joshua's a contemporary. Right? George Foreman's not going to get in the ring and fight Joshua. George Foreman's not angling for a fight. Right, But understand, Deontay Wilder's been around. Deontay Wilder's a guy who takes rematches. Didn't he fight Bermain Stavern? Isn't his next fight against Luis Ortiz? Deontay Wilder feels that Joshua doesn't know why he lost. 
to Anthony uh, to Andy Ruiz. Understand too. Foreman and Lewis felt that Joshua needs a new trainer. In other words, they saw the fight. They saw the holes, right? And the holes are there for anyone, right? What exactly is Joshua doing <laughs> defensively when he's up against the ropes? Forget the very poor rapport with the referee. What exactly is Joshua trying to accomplish? So, to sum up, I'm expecting a repeat of the first fight. In fact, if Joshua is so sensitive that he's thrown off by boo birds in the crowd, then I think this rematch might even be shorter than the first fight. I like Andy Ruiz at two and a half to one to win the fight, right? Quite frankly, I don't know how the fight goes the distance, but again, you're going to give me a plus 250, I'll uh, take it, right? I'll uh, take it. Um, hedged with Joshua by KO, right? Maybe Joshua catches Andy. He caught him in the first fight, right? But understand, if a boxing match breaks out in a boxing match, I don't think Joshua can hang, right? I think... He looks a lot like Vladimir Klitschko. We thought, you know what? He has power like Klitschko. Right? He sets up like Klitschko. He believes in his jab like Klitschko did. He must be Vladimir Klitschko. Right? He beat Klitschko. We'll forget the fact that Klitschko's older at that time, had been out of the ring for a long period of time, had lost to Tyson Fury before that. Okay, we'll forget all those facts. He beat Klitschko. So we thought, hey, this is the next Klitschko. Maybe it's not that easy. Maybe winning your title over Charles Martin, winning a decision, a decision over Joseph Parker, right? Where the referee doesn't allow the fighters to get inside. Let's face it. Didn't Dylan White look better against Joseph Parker than Anthony Joshua did? Right? How bad? <laughs> he wins his title by beating Charles Martin. Right? How much experience in that fight where he throws a couple of counter straight right hands and wins the title that way? How much did he learn in that fight, folks? Are you sure that 22 fights into his career, He's ready to deal with a guy who has already knocked him down four times in a rematch in his first fight back with the same trainer fighting in a country where not a lot of Englishmen are going to be in the crowd, certainly not as many as would have been in the crowd in, let's say, New York City or Vegas, right? Add it all up, and I think this fight is not priced right. I'm expecting the champion, Ruiz, to successfully defend his belt. Let's be clear, too. Andy's only lost once. That was the close decision to Joseph Parker. Right? I expect Andy to win. The way I'm playing it, betting-wise, is to take Ruiz to win, hedged with Joshua by stoppage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you... Tell me and everyone here on Twitter what you think about this fight in the comment section of this video. Finally, let me say this too. I have an open invitation to fighters, right? Completely open. I don't want to interview any fighters. I respect fighters. I'm just not an interviewer, right? I'm an early in the morning, about to actually do my day job type of guy, giving thoughts on boxing. Not really an interviewer. If you're from the Joshua camp, if you're from the Ruiz camp, and you want to offer a rebuttal or some thoughts in response to this video, send me that video, and I will post it here on my site. No one's ever taken me up on it, even though I have heard from some fighters. <laughs> right? I've had some angry fighters call me. 
but no one's ever taken me up on that offer. Send me the video of your thoughts. AJ, you want to comment on this video? Go ahead and post it yourself on your own YouTube account. Just send me a copy, and I'll post it on mine, unedited. Looking forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.